Hello, welcome back, this is Lorenzo, you're watching episode 14 of KSP to Mars and we are currently observing Desmond Kerman who is in orbit around Kerbin just barely at an altitude of 115 kilometers with six units of fuel remaining and what he just did was perform the burn that put him on a re-entry trajectory see, same as the last two episodes, we are attempting to do a proper re-entry and so far it has not proven easy or indeed possible. Last episode I talked about the deadly re-entry plugin and how I updated it so that it was now compatible with the real solar system and the heat shields. Turns out that was not actually the case. I needed a config file in a mod from a mod called Realism Overhaul. I think I got it now and we are attempting another re-entry to well, see if that's actually the case. I performed the burn um, here and let me go to the map view to show you that would put our periapsis um, how can I show this all the way on this side of the planet my intention is let's see is to land here on the ice caps I'm thinking I will probably dip into the atmosphere somewhere around here rather soon and then our past experiences have shown that the braking effect is rather rapid, at least on the scale of this map view, because this here appears to be the same size as stock Kerbin, but it's of course 10 times bigger. So where this uh, a stock Kerbin re-entry profile would probably land somewhere here-ish, but now I'm hoping to make for the ice caps. The goal of the mission is still the same. This is the third Kerbal with full courage and stupidity meters, and hopefully, of course, he will not die. But that remains to be seen if I put the config files correctly, if they in fact work and if the re-entry corridor is possible at all. I skipped the rocket launch and if this is your first episode of the series that you're watching and have no idea what's going on, please watch the previous episode, number 13, everyone's lucky number, um, because up until this point that has literally been the exact same process, which is also the reason why I skipped it this time. So. Let's time warp until we hit the atmosphere and then see how we do in this re-entry scenario. So we are, well, the first thing of my plan has failed already. I'm only entering the atmosphere here, most of the way over the ice caps that I wanted to land on. So that is going out of the window, as in the last episode. Quite some finesse still to be had with pinpointing landing sites. Look, so here we are. We are now in the atmosphere, so I'm going to orient myself retrograde and ditch the rocket with the remaining six units of fuel. There we go. Bye bye, rocket. And now is the same waiting game as it was all these times before. So I'm going to accelerate time, physical time warp now, so everything is simulated but at four times the rate. Rather dangerous to do if you are piloting a large vessel, but for a capsule like this it's relatively safe. I'm going to do this until I'm at an altitude of about 80 kilometers, or we get some significant heating from the heat shield. At that point I want to, well, not be in control because there's not really anything I can do, but I want to monitor the situation and see what happens if this heat shield is in fact going to work. What happened last time was that the heat shield was heating up, but the pod behind that was heating up just the same. That's of course not really the point. And I click on them like they're different parts, but they're not, they're the same part, but with a built-in heat shield. So what we should be seeing is that it just doesn't really explode when it heats up. At least I think. At least the oh 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 oh. This is what happens when you try to control anything at physical time warp levels. Uh, reducing that time warp now and going to orient the pod properly retrograde again. I have to remind myself not to control anything while this re-entry is happening. At least, the very least, not while physical time warp is on, which is now on again. So. Because the pod and the heat shield are one part, there's no use toggling like between the shield and the pod, as I was doing in the last few episodes, that was just plain silly, really. The temperature should stay below like 15, 1600 degrees, that's the threshold where it used to explode, and the heat shield should, if it's working properly, achieve this by ablating, reducing this bar, and shedding heat, dissipating heat away from the pod that way. 
hopefully that will work. If it doesn't, if it still doesn't work, I'm literally going to go back into the internet and find out what I'm doing wrong. Because at this point, I have been told by the mods creator even that it should work, and I hope it does. Because if it works, if it works, that means we are definitely capable. Ooh, look out! Trying to control it again. Don't do that. Only control it with the stability system on. Anyway, here we are again. If we now can land this safely, we can shoot this orbital rocket, basically aim it anywhere on the planet and land the capsule doing science. We might even get away with uh, stripping these batteries, adding a goo container and hell, maybe, maybe even a materials lab if we beef up the launcher a little bit more. That of course unlocks a lot of science from all of the biomes which in turn leads to bigger rockets, better stability, better utilities, better tools and of course furthering of our ultimate goal which is interstellar um, a colony on Mars. Yes. So, I'm going to accelerate at four times for a little longer, see how the temperatures are doing. We are now heating, we're at 80 kilometers. I think this should be fine now to skip to the one one time time acceleration. Does appear we will be landing in sunset. Let's have a look at the map. How where is that sun? There it is. While well, we're kind of Yeah, we could be seeing a far off dawn, but this might be a night re-entry. We have already dissipated our periapsis. Well that's not really proper terminology, but we have slowed down enough so that we're not going to skip back into space so we are committed to landing which was the point so we're not worried about that here we're getting the first heating effect we're at 60 degrees now and now what I want to see is to is to have it heat up to 3 400 and start ablating and then not heating up any further that would be great that would be great so let's see let's see how this goes and if this goes horribly wrong, then I don't know how to fix it. And that's not a nice feeling. <laughs> because if there's a problem, I would like to do some engineering to fix it. But if the shield just doesn't work, I don't know what to do about that. And the shield did work, but that was not on a full re-entry. That was from like 6 kilometers per second. Not a huge difference, but still a difference. And that was a much steeper descent in which the g-force has killed that occupant. I think if it doesn't work this time around I'm going to try a steeper descent but not as steep as that obviously with something like a periapse of 30 kilometers. Anyway here we go we will know soon enough if this made any difference at all whether we add Desmond to the graveyard or whether we give him a medal and celebrate our new achievements. We are coming up on 200 degrees and I would really like to see this heat shield, this pod, start ablating. I think we'll f we're fine at least until we reach the realm of 50 kilometers in altitude. And still so far, apart from the commentary, today has been pretty much the same as, uh, as yesterday's episode. I'm trying to control the pod and I shouldn't do that, because if I tumble and expose the wrong side, then they are doomed. It will just tumble, heat up from the wrong side and immediately explode. So we're at 340 degrees. Now we're slowly ablating and that should stop the temperature rise, at least slow it. So please ablate faster and save us. We're coming up on 400, that's still not... Mm, 400 is still not a problem can still deal with that just fine. It's when we get into the thicker bits of the atmosphere where the heating becomes so excessive that we can't manage it. We're at 2 G's deceleration now and the temperature is rising again. I have put all the correct configuration files. If we explode, if Desmond bites it as well, he does look a fair bit calmer than the pilots before him. If this doesn't work Ooh, and we will see soon enough if it works. We're almost at a thousand degrees here for the pod. It doesn't show any signs of cooling. Come on, heat shield, give me some ablation. Figure this out. 1300 degrees, start ablating and start cooling. Do it! 
is, is not looking good at all. We're at six, almost seven degrees, uh, seven, seven G's deceleration. Ooh, the heat shield is ablating now. The temperature was dropping. What happened? It burned up, but the, at the, oh, I don't understand. Don't understand. Right, I'm going to try this again with a different descent profile. I'm not going to show you the other ascent. I'll see you when that is ready to burn up, almost certainly. Right on here, I'm back in a post commentary. The beginning bit was a uh, live recording. What is going on? You might be wondering why um, why the pod exploded while well, the re-entry was pretty much textbook perfect. At least I think it was. I figured it out after some long and arduous experimenting. Uh, I had swapped out the config file that makes the heat shields compatible with real solar system. But the pod doesn't count as a heat shield. It has a built-in heat shield, but that is defined in the file for the pod, so I had missed that config file. I didn't immediately catch on to this. What you're watching here is James Kerman. He is trying a periapsis of 40 kilometers, and here's what happened. After James came Railing Kerman. He tried a periapsis of 20 kilometers. Here's what happened. And after railing came Elrod Kerman trying a gutsy periapsis of zero kilometers. And somewhat predictably, here's what happened. After all these failures, I went back to the forums, asked my questions, and Ferrum and Nathan Cal were kind enough to, to help me out. I got the correct config file and sent Lenby, or Lesby, Kerman up into space with that config pod through a re-entry, but upon report returning to the atmosphere, he was rather surprised to find that his capsule had now become incredibly unstable. Uh, it's tumbling through the atmosphere here, you can observe that, and you might imagine that that is not the best thing for well, for safety. The thing is, the config that made the pod, the pod's heat shield uh, cope with the real solar system air also removed its gyroscopes, so it was pretty much uncontrollable. I since added that in, but for now you can see what happened to Lenby's Kerman. The, I think this episode is the most packed with casualties so far, so again, very predictably, here's what happened. So, here we are, at long last, with the properly configured pod, I'd re-added the gyroscopes. Not as powerful as a reaction wheel or as powerful as a stock pod, but I did add some in so that it can keep its re-entering trajectory. We have Jervan Kerman, the, I think the 6th or 7th Kerman to try this this episode, on what I think is a decent re-entry trajectory from orbit with a periapsis set at something about 55 kilometers. We're heating up to the point of 600 degrees now, and this is a post-commentary, so I'm calm and composed, and I can talk to you about what happened, but at this point I was ready to give up. If it was not going to re-enter like this, then either I had to get new parts, scrub the series, bash my head against the wall, or through the monitor, I don't know, I was getting quite frustrated. Because remember, all of these pods that you saw re-entering and exploding took about 15 to 20 minutes to send up into orbit in the first place. Could have used quick save, quick loads, but I thought that was cheating. And with every run I thought this could be the one, so I recorded the whole bit and then could cut out just the explosions for you. It's going a fair bit better now, we're at 47 kilometers, that's better than all the runs before and the heat shield is ablating. There's still a lot of it left. We're at about 200 ablation points as I like to call them and the rate is increasing. Temperature's about steady at 730 to 50 degrees and deceleration is between 5 and 10 G's at about 7. 
4 kilometers per second of speed left to scrub. And what I was wondering about is we have the surface and the orbit indicators, and in an equatorial orbit, uh, the difference is about 460 meters per second. What I was wondering is if does KSP simulate the rotation of the atmosphere with the rotation of the planet? So if uh, you come in along the equator, do you hit the atmosphere at, say, 9 kilometers per second or 8.6? I don't know this. Anyway, it looks like we are through the worst of it. We are at 2 kilometers per second, but now that we get into the thicker part of the air, the heat shield starts ablating right quickly. I estimate we have about 20, 10, about 10 seconds left of heat shield ablation, and even though we are only at 1200 meters per second, now that last bit of heat could torch us, and indeed the temperature does rise sharply near the end, but then falls off as we get to speeds under a kilometer per second. This means Jervin is his safety is almost assured. He is going to waft down on his parachute and I think, if I recall correctly, be the first vessel from orbit to be recovered. So this descent down to the planet is uh, rather long, so I'm going to accelerate that for you. So here you are looking at a five times accelerated version of the pod descending the final kilometers, deploying the parachute and finally coming down to that 500 meter altitude where the parachute deploys and then it's just waiting for the capsule to hit the ground. Once down, Jervin will proceed to go outside, take the surface samples, do the science and I think he's even going to plant the flag. Look, can he, it's not swampy here, he can just walk on it, plant the flag and shouts out I'm alive, he thinks taking the samples, going back into the pod and retreating to the space center. Get the science and look at the tech tree. What we want is of course the big engine at the heavy rocketry node, but for now let's take a moment to commemorate the dead. This is the list, almost all of them from this episode. I count seven dead Kerbals and of course poor Jebediah from last episode. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe and see how many more Kerbals we kill in the coming episodes. Most of the time there's one, one a day. See you next time. Bye.